All right, let's talk magnets and EVA foam. In today's video, we're going to talk through four different ways that you can attach magnets to your EVA foam, depending on the situation, and three key things to consider and remember when you're uh, using magnetic attachments in EVA foam. If you're excited about this video, type in the comments below magnetism. <laughs> All right, with that, while you're typing that in the comments, We'll give you a second on your way back up, hit that bell notification and select all so that you can be sub subscribed and receive all these notifications whenever these cosplay quick tip clips come out so you can stay on top of your game, cosplay like a boss. With that, let's jump in. Let's talk magnets and magnetic connections with EVA foam. All right, so uh, let's jump in. A couple different ways that you can do uh, EVA foam attachments. All right, so with the thicker foam here like this, um, if you're needing to connect something edge to edge like this, one way that you can do that is what I call a side swipe. Um, and so on the back here, you can see, um, unfortunately, I didn't have the right thickness, uh, size magnet for this EVA foam. I needed a little bit thicker foam for this size magnet or a little bit smaller magnet for this. But you can get the idea here. So um, you go in just a little bit in on your foam and you kind of cut out a little section, a slot that you can slide your magnet in. Now, ideally, you don't want it sticking out the back like this. So that's where the slightly smaller magnet would be advantageous. And then on your other side, you'd have your other magnet. And then because of the strong magnetic connection between the two, you'd be able to just have those uh, edges just kind of snap together, right? And uh, so that is one kind of what I call the side swipe. Where, now, where would you so yeah, this is the scenario that you'd use if you needed to um, connect two sides uh, edge to edge like this, and where maybe you wouldn't be able to use one of the techniques we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, just because of you know it needing to be a slimmer profile or different things like that, where you don't have a whole lot of room on the inside or different things to add another uh, extra little overlap layer. Um, so the other way that you can use the side swipe is um, you could actually uh, slice right into through the actual side of it here and do that same thing and then slide your magnet in and then have your connection be able to connect right on top of the magnet there. So for example, we have that uh, right here. Uh, this I just did a thin little metal washer on the inside, um, but you can see that you're still going to get that uh, magnetic connection there with that metal through there. Um, and we're using that side swipe method. All right, so that's the side swipe. Then you have the inset and the reverse inset. So to show you an example of that here, um, you can see on my uh, Black Panther helmet here, um, I would just carve an inset into the uh, foam and then uh, stick the magnet inside of it. Now on these, I wish I had done a reverse inset and actually stuck the magnet on the other side. And the reason for that is that whenever you can do a reverse inset, like inset it on the back side of the foam, it's going to be able to help with your, um, your uh, adhesion of gluing your magnets in. It, the magnets aren't going to be pulling each other out of the inset that you've created. Instead, it'll be pulling it into the foam um, and not pulling it out. So let me show you that example right here. So I've got the... I took this foam right here and I just created a little inset that I can just drop my magnet in right there. And I'll show you here in a second how to create that inset. Now on the other side, so here I'm using the reverse inset, but on this side, because let's say this is the top of my piece and I don't want the magnet to be visible, I'm not going to do um, this inset on the reverse side so that it's foam to foam. If I had a layer that was going to go over the top of this, then I could take advantage of doing that reverse inset and then gluing the layer over the top so you wouldn't see it. And then I wouldn't have the magnet actually exposed. But so we'd glue this one in like that, glue this one in like that. Whoops. And then when uh, you go to attach your two pieces, boom, they would just like snug right up on top of each other like that. All right. So that is your inset and reverse inset inset. So the difference between that is just that um, one would be like if we just had this facing outward like we had on the Black Panther helmet, um, this facing outward, that's just your inset. But if you're doing it on the back side of where the actual magnet attachment will happen, 
then that would be your, your reverse inset. Okay, so uh, next would be the uh, sandwich method. So in this scenario, you have, let's say, for example, I'm going to probably use this for my uh, pauldrons uh, to attach my pauldrons for hiccup. Um, what I want to do is have that be a magnetic attachment. So right in the olden times for attaching armor, they used to use ties, you know, attached to their gambus in to be able to loop into the pauldrons and different things like that, tie them on so that they're attached there. What I'm going to do is using this sandwich technique. So I've got this magnet. I'm going to sandwich it into some four millimeter EVA foam. And then I can then use contact cement or other things because, you know, some a lot of glues have a hard time sticking to magnets and keeping them uh, stuck down because there's so much pull on them. But we sandwich this completely in some EVA foam and we can then either use contact cement or, you know, potentially, depending on how it goes in a future video we're doing, sew uh, this into a cloth. You could do a sandwiching technique with material and sew it into a... Um, a cloth, a cloth like your undershirt or your uh, underpiece kind of thing, and then you put a magnetic attachment on your pauldron on the inside, and then whoop, snap right on um, that way as well, right? So then you'd have your magnet that would just then stick to your sandwiched um, magnet right there. So sandwiching technique. All right, and then using kind of a combination of some of these, like the uh, that you saw here with like the uh, inset and reverse inset. You can do uh, overlaps and underlaps. So let's say you do have a character like C-3PO's uh, helmet, right? Where he kind of has that rim that runs all the way around the two halves of his uh, helmet. You could take advantage of the fact that there's that overlap. And instead of in this scenario where we did uh, this edge to edge piece um, with having to do it with the side swipe like this, you can take advantage of that overlap that's on the exterior and um, when you have your, let's say, okay, this piece is continues on to your helmet, let's say this is like your overlap piece, right? Then you could do um, your inset there and then a reverse inset on the back of this piece. Now they're not glued in, but then you just would be able to take advantage of that overlap between the two layers to have your magnet set in so that when you just like set your piece on it just is going to magnetize in there and you take advantage of that overlap you know this would probably be thinner right and then glued on top of this piece okay so um, that would be like your overlap and then the other scenario is like i did here on the black panther helmet where you need to have just kind of your seams just side by side um, or maybe there's like a panel line right there kind of thing and you're going to use that as a uh, an area where you can, sorry, this one's kind of falling apart. It's several years old. Um, but let's say you have kind of actual seam line there. Then what you can do is glue this uh, underlap where you actually take another piece of foam, glue it here so that it sticks out, and then you can use your insets um, on your piece that will be attaching over the top. <laughs> Got a little uh, stowaway there. Um, and then be able to have it just attach right along your seam line. Let's say you're doing like a, a chest plate or something like that that doesn't look like it really has um, any kind of, it may have just a seam there, but you're like, how does it connect or different things like that? You can do that under underlap and then just have it so that when you connect the other piece on, it snaps right into place in a couple spots, you know? Um, so there's the four different ways that uh, I have found work really well for being able to attach your uh, magnets in there. Now let's talk about three things that you want to keep in mind or a little extra tricks that you can use um, when attaching magnets as well. So you saw here when I that I added a washer in. So I did the same thing here on the black, back of the Black Panther helmet. When you have a stronger magnet, like these neodymium magnets, uh, especially as you get a little bit larger ones, you don't necessarily always need to put a magnet on both sides. You can uh, save on your magnets and get like inexpensive uh, metal washers and put those in using the same like inset techniques or different things on one side and then use your magnet on the other to be able to magnetize that piece down. Um, and so that's a, a handy trick there. And then when gluing these, what I like to do, um, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys how I created these insets. Um, 
So basically, I just traced the uh, just traced the magnet onto the foam, right? The size of the magnet here onto the foam. In this case, I'm just going to do this small one because it'll be easier to show because I don't have to do as much rounding. And then you just take your uh, Dremel with a stone bit on it. And in the case of the larger ones, right, then you start to kind of just hit that circle rim that you drew and work your way in. Basically just creating that little uh, inset there and then you can drop your magnet in. So what I found that works best um, you can use kind of, uh, super glue. I found that it tends to end up kind of cracking and giving way uh, depending on the type of super glue you're using, um, at least the kind that I have done. So I found that actually hot glue works really well, especially for anywhere you're just doing the inset and the magnet is actually um, pulling, like in this scenario here. So this one would be the reverse, so we'd be sticking to this side. But on this side, we need to stick it in this hole and that magnet is actually going to be pulling it's trying to pull itself out of um out of the hole hopefully this makes sense so we've got the reverse on this one so this magnet when we pull on it it's just pulling it into the foam but this one here because this is the outside of our visible piece we don't want that to be seen we have to do it this way and so we would um we need to glue this in but it's going to be trying to pull itself out what I found works really well for that is you actually um, score the inside of the your inset with a razor blade and then drop your hot glue in there, place your magnet in, and it's going to squish out on the sides. And then you want to, once it's cool enough to touch but it's not fully set yet, try to smear that hot glue around so it almost creates just a tiny thin film over the top and uh, around on your EVA foam there. That gives it plenty to stick to and that tends to hold up pretty well. Eventually it may pull out, then you just go ahead and just like heat that hot glue back up and just kind of reset it and then you're good to go again. So uh, for gluing, that's a big technique that I recommend. Now, as far as for timing for setting your magnets in, this is the last thing and then we'll be, uh, let you guys go and play with magnets and have fun. Um, all right, so for timing, this is a key thing. You don't want to put your magnets in before you paint, especially if you're going to be using any kind of aerosol paints with spray paint or airbrush paints because it will, the when the paints are atomized, that electromagnetic field that's created from the magnet will actually uh, repel that um, <laughs> um, those little particles of paint and you'll see a visible space where you're not getting a very good coverage or coat right where your magnet is. It'll be very visible on the outside that there's a magnet underneath your foam right there. So put them, put them in, get your insets ready, test them out, make sure they line up properly and everything like that, but then pull them out, do your painting, and then afterwards go and then glue your magnets in and give it your final test fit. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. I know there's a lot to cover in this. Hopefully it made sense. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comments below. Um, this is a super exciting way to be able to attach different pieces, whether it's props to be able to disassemble them and make it easier to travel with, um, or costumes to be able to easily have them attach and take them on, on and off. Um, you can do it with like vise and things like that as well. We're gonna be using the magnets to have a sliding action on uh, our dark saber um, to reveal our, dark, our uh, kyber crystal. Um, there's so many different ways you can use this. Please let us know and share uh, when you guys use these techniques, share it with us on Instagram at Cosplay Apprentice and give this video a like, share it with a friend. Cosplay on my friends. Thank you guys so much. See ya.